Hi, welcome back to another Cypher 2 tutorial. In the last video, we made a sound from scratch. And in this video, we're going to build on that sound and make it 5D, which means MPE compatible. So ideally for this, you'll have an MPE controller such as the Roly Seaboards. So because I'm switching from 2D to 5D sound, I'm going to go up to the top of the browser here and just click on 5D. And that's going to make sure that the internal MIDI controller mappings are correct for that type of keyboard. And you can see that we've switched to a 5D representation of a Seaboard down here. So we know that whatever we do now, it's going to work properly within the context of MPE MIDI. So we've saved our sound in the previous tutorial as uh, this sweet FM keyboard sound. Now the first thing I noticed when playing this on the Seaboard instead of my 2D MIDI controller is that the velocity sensitivity is a lot higher on the Seaboard. So what I'm going to do is go back to that envelope 1 slot that we made that is controlling the frequency modulation of oscillator 1. And I'm going to reduce this amount because the top velocities are, are bringing in this quite harsh FM tone. <laughs> So the five dimensions of MPE MIDI. We've got strike, we've got glide, we've got slide, we've got pressure, and we've got lift. And up here in the transmod section, you'll see these thin modulation sources. And you'll also see as I roll over them that the visualizer changes to show me the corresponding curve. The first mod slot here is the strike curve, and that is basically velocity, which is something that we already set up. So we actually can ignore that for now, and I'm going to go straight to the glide curve. Glide represents the x-axis on a rolly seaboard. Now normally, glide is applied to pitch, so that you can do natural vibratos with your finger. Now because this is a kind of an electric piano keyboard type sound, I don't actually want to have full control over vibrato, but because this is an FM sound, I'm only going to scale the pitch of oscillator 1. Now I'm going to go into the snap mode and change this to equal and set it to 48 semitones. Now that corresponds with the 48 semitone pitch bend range of the Roly Seaboard Rise. If you're using a different MP controller keyboard, you might need to set this differently depending on the keyboard settings itself. What this gives me is a rather nice FM effect on the glide axis. So that's glide. Let's move on to slide. Slide is the Y axis. So as I slide my finger up and down, this modulation source is going to be effective. Let's apply this to the ring modulation of oscillator 1. Now this is going to use oscillator 2 to ring modulate oscillator 1, which is a different kind of sound than FM modulation, but it gives us another timbre that we can play with. So as I slide up, So that gives us another source of expressivity on the y-axis. Pressure is a modulation source derived from pressing your finger in to the keyboard. And we might as well use the third modulation source here for oscillator 1, and that is FM3. So that's how much oscillator 3 over here is modulating the frequency of oscillator 1. <laughs> So if you combine the four polyphonic modulation sources we're currently using, you get all sorts of different modulations of oscillator 1 going on. So we might as well complete this by using the fifth and final dimension, and that's called lift. And that's how hard you pull your finger off the keyboard. 
Now for this, I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm going to go to envelope two, which we haven't used yet. And I'm going to change the trigger mode here to poly off. And that means that whenever a note off is detected, the envelope two will be triggered. I'm going to select the envelope two mod slot source. And again, we're going to use FM three. So that gives us a nice little snappy sound at the end of each note. Now the keen-eyed among you will notice that this sound that we made back when we were working with a normal 2D controller keyboard was using the modulation wheel and we've kind of lost that a bit. The modulation source is still up here but because we're using a Rolly Seaboard Rise we don't have a modulation wheel. I'm going to remap that modulation wheel to performance macro 1 and this is this knob down here which also happens to be by default MIDI mapped to slider number 1 on the Rolly Seaboard Rise. So I can now use that just like I used the modulation wheel to bring in some of that vibrato that we programmed. I think the final thing I'd like to do with this sound is to make more use of the velocity to affect the kind of sound that this actually is. So I'm going to bring the amp attack up a little to make more of a pad sound. Nice, but then what I want to happen is as I strike harder, I want that attack to come back again so we get more of the pluck type sound. So I'm going to use the strike curve here and I'm just going to apply a negative amount to the amp attack. So when I play softly, I still get the pad type sound. But when I increase the strike, I get a much more plucky sound. I feel lastly that this sound could really use some kind of ambient wash so a little bit of reverb or delay is always nice on a sound like this. And that is our first five-dimensional sound. Join me for more tutorials soon.